Spoiler alert, quick spoiler alert, the ring gets destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> If you close your eyes The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. So The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King is essentially, again, setting up from Lord of the Rings The Two Towers. Rohan has won his victory over Saruman, and Saruman is pretty much trapped in Isengard. Now it's Mordor and Gondor's turn. Now they have to fight this whole thing out. And along the way, Frodo and Saruman are also going to try and destroy the One Ring. Now first off, once again, set visuals, music, acting, again, all very good. But once again, like I said in The Lord of the Rings The Two Towers, I also enjoyed the tone of this movie. What it cleverly does with the tone in this movie is the fact that there are some moments in here where you know they're cheering they're like going yes this is such a light movie i'm feeling heroic all of a sudden boom darkness there are two moments in particular that i really enjoyed when those kind of things were happening first off it was when theoden and then the rest of rohan were like come on we can push them to the river ah! and then all of a sudden you get a little bit of a roar from the oliphants in the other side and then theoden's reaction <laughs> theoden's reaction is just priceless in this movie again like i said the tone light to dark you're just like oh wow okay Jesus. But it's also another moment as well, is the climax of this movie. Because the ring gets destroyed, Mordor is about to be brought down, and Aragorn and Gimli and Merry and Pippin are just going, Yeah! Yeah! We won! Get in! Boom! Off goes Mount Doom. All of a sudden, gloom to doom. Just that sudden tonal shift always gets me. I love those moments. I think that was brilliant in this movie. What I also really enjoyed in this movie was the relationship between Frodo, Gollum and Sam. I really did enjoy just the way that they were all connected and then disconnected and then tried to connect again. They were more involved in this movie than they were in the last two movies, and rightfully so, because the ring is going to be destroyed, so you've got to pretty much include them in the main storyline of this movie. But that's what I loved about this movie, just the fact that Gollum is tricking them all to try and get Frodo into Shelob's lair, and Sam goes back down. I mean, I really did feel for that moment. I really did. I felt for Sam, and I felt for Frodo, because he's being corrupted, but he doesn't know about it. It's just that sudden turn again, just when he realises, oh shit, Gollum's betrayed me, hasn't he? I just love those moments. The relationship as a whole, I think, is just really cleverly done. And what I particularly liked about this movie is, like in The Lord of the Rings The Two Towers, there is a lot of moments in this movie that I can literally just pick off here, 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 and everywhere that I just really did enjoy. I mean, first off, you've got the beacon system. I thought the beacon system was really clever. I just thought it was very mesmerizing in terms of the set. You've got all these beacons going off on all these mountains. I thought that was really quite cool. And then you've got Shelob as well. I mean, talk about a terrifying fucking spider. And then, of course, you've also got that really legendary moment of Legolas versus a single Oliphant. And just Gimli going, still only counts as one. You can't replace how good that was. But there's one particular moment that I'll always look at that will always make me laugh absolutely hysterically. Like in Two Towers, you got Legolas and Gimli giving a bit of banter to each other on the wall. But there was one particular moment in The Return of the King that always fucking gets me every single time. It's that single bit where Gandalf is literally on a Oscar just going, You are soldiers of Gondor. No matter what comes through that gate, you shall stand your ground. And then all of a sudden, about five or six fucking trolls just comes knifing towards him. Gandalf's reaction is just fucking priceless, just like, I fucking love that moment. But what I also really liked in this movie was the fact that there were two people in this movie in particular that got some shining moments in this movie that, for me, completely deserved it. And that was Aragorn and Theoden. I mean, Aragorn's speech when they're about to march onto the Black Gate, or, you know, just stay there, stand still, and just accept the battle. His speech, I thought, was absolutely brilliant. I really love that. But you've also got Theoden as well. Theoden, I thought, killed it in this movie because there were two moments for him that I always particularly enjoyed from him. The first moment is when Theoden is going to charge onto the orcs that are down on Pelennor Fields. His speech is fucking brilliant. I love that speech. It always gets me riled up just like, ah, come on! Let's attack the orcs once more. I fucking love that speech. I think it's really good. But it was also his death as well. His death was just really riveting for me. I really did just feel sorrow for the guy. Now, like I said in the last movie for the Two Towers was that there was the Arwen and Elrond flashbacks that I just particularly didn't care for. But in the third movie, finally, they actually have some meaning in this movie. So Arwen comes back because she sees her son just in flashbacks or whatever so she goes back to see Elrond and then they're like forge the sword if we're going to help them the best way to do it is to forge the sword that Aragorn is going to use and personally I really felt for that I think it was really cleverly used and I thought it really did help the story move along and finally Arwen and Elrond get some involvement that's actually fucking useful unlike in the last movie now along with all that good stuff there is a lot of negatives that I took away from this film that not only annoy me but they actually really infuriate me and I mean really piss me off I mean first 
first off, you've got Arwen here. Now, Arwen in the last movie, I thought was quite an interesting thing. I just saw that bit Arwen goes on about just saying, long ago, women of this country learned that if we still don't have souls, we can still die upon them. I fear no death, no pain. I thought that was really interesting. I like the concept with Arwen in the second movie. Third movie, not so much. I think they just took her a little bit too far in this movie, a bit too literally as well, because there's just a bit in this movie that really pisses me off. It's when Gandalf is saying to Pippin and Minas Tirith before the battle's happening, Sauron is yet to release the one that they say no man can kill. That's the key point in that whole thing he said there. They say. So he's not taking it literally, but unfortunately the movie just decided to take it literally. I mean, sure you're going to tell me that the books do it as well, but for me, personally, I just found that to be just really annoying. I don't really know. I didn't like that approach. I thought it was a bit too stupid, really. And it was the fact that Arwen had left to go and fight. Who was protecting Rohan at this time? There was no leader of Rohan. It was a very selfish move, in my opinion. And also what really annoyed me in this movie was singing. Why was there singing in this movie? Like when Faramir is about to charge over to Osgiliath, Pippin is singing to Denethor. That was awful. I did not like that singing whatsoever. And then obviously you've got the end of the movie, which I'll get to a bit later on, where Aragorn is singing as well. <laughs> What is it with singing in this movie? I literally do not understand it. Now, I know I've mentioned this a few times in my reviews, saying that the CGI of trolls and uruk and orcs pissed me off in the first one, but they got a lot better in the second one. The third movie, I was fairly happy with, but there was this guy. I mean, seriously, this guy looked like me if I had a really bad allergic reaction to shrimp. I mean, seriously, he looked fucking stupid. But saying that, the rest were fine. You know, the Oliphants, the trolls, the orcs, you know, the rest of them looked completely fine. And there was also a segment in this movie where there's a place called Kirith Ongol, and basically Sam was going going there to try and rescue Frodo because Frodo has been taken from the orcs. And basically there's this little fight as well that goes down between the orcs and the uruk -hai. I found that whole Kirith on Gol thing to be incredibly convenient, especially for Sam. It kind of annoyed me just a tiny bit, but I wasn't too pissed off about it. However, there is one thing in particular with this movie that really, really pissed me off. And it was actually the deleted scenes. There were three deleted scenes in this movie that were not included in the final cut that for me, I just felt like it really needed in this movie. And I don't understand why they took come out. Because the first scene is the fact that Saruman is in this movie, but he also isn't in this movie. In the final cut, he's actually not even in this movie, which kind of pisses me off, really, because Christopher Lee as Saruman is one of the best characters I've seen in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, along with Gandalf and Boromir, but why is he not in this movie? In the final cut, all Gandalf says is that, no, he has no power anymore. And then that's literally it. You're just left with the fact that Saruman has no power anymore, and he's just up in the tower just crying or something. But it was also, where's Grimmer? Because Grimmer disappears for a little bit in the second one and you kind of like, where's he? But you always assumed he's in the tower. But he wasn't seen at all in the third one. So it's like, is he in the tower with Saruman? What's going on there? The deleted scene reveals exactly what's going on there and it finally, you know, kills off Saruman. But they left it out. I don't know why they left it out. I mean, unless it was for the bit where he falls onto a wheel because, uh, yeah, that requires a 15 rating for that bit. But seriously, other than that, I don't understand why they left it out. There's also another deleted scene where there's a little tiny cool point where Gandalf and the Witch King are actually having a little bit of a fight. Well, like a confrontation, should I say. I also found that to be really cool, because at that particular moment as well, the Witch King is about to slash Gandalf and he's maybe going to try and kill him, and then Rohan clicks in with the horns and there they come. Because in the final cut of this movie, it's literally just Gandalf just going, fight! Fight for your lives! Fight to the last man! And then Rohan come. Personally, I found the other version to be a lot better. I would rather have him facing the Witch King just for a tiny bit and realising he's a powerful motherfucker here. And then the final scene is also the mouth of Sauron coming into play, because as Aragorn and them lot are going to charge onto the Black Gate to tell them to open the gates. The mouth of Sauron then comes into play and he has the Mithril that Frodo once wore and throws it on them, so making them believe that Frodo is now dead. And so the main characters are feeling despair and a bit annoyed, but then Aragorn slashes it, kills the mouth of Sauron and just goes, I don't believe it. Do you want to believe this kind of crap? Which I actually found really interesting. I thought that was a really good moment, but obviously they took it out of the final cut. Now obviously I'm pretty sure everyone's going to be talking about it when it comes to Lord of the Rings Return of the King is obviously the endings in this movie. Seriously, in my opinion, this movie should have ended with Aragorn not singing at all and literally have him reunite with Arwen and then them bowing over to the Hobbits. That's when it should have cut because then Frodo just narrates for a little bit just about them going back home and then there's that stupid relationship between Sam and that waitress girl or whatever which you forgot or didn't care for, which I was both really. And then obviously you got the ending where Bilbo and Frodo and Gandalf and the elves are off to go wherever. I really didn't care. Personally, it should have ended 15 minutes 
minutes ago. But guys, in the end, I will say that I did enjoy the Lord of the Rings Return of the King. Probably not as much as the Two Towers, but I did enjoy better than Fellowship of the Ring. Because frankly, in the Fellowship of the Ring, there wasn't really that much going on. But in Return of the King, you've got cool action scenes at Minas Tirith. You've got the Black Gate as well, and all that kind of shit going down, which is really cool. And then obviously, you've got the Oliphants as well, which are also fucking amazing. And then obviously, those mistakes I just mentioned. But other than that, I will say that this is a good movie, and I will be keeping this movie and putting this on my bottom shelf. But guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you will enjoy more videos that is to come on this channel. If you've got any questions or any opinions that you want to express for yourselves, leave a comment down below and I guarantee you I will contact you straight away. But for now guys, I will see you in the future. <laughs>